The next reaction we're gonna see is called hydroboration oxidation, as it occurs in two steps. This will occur by first having the addition of the borane across the alkene, followed by oxidation of the carbon-boron bond. In this reaction, we will have anti-Markovnikov addition for the regiochemical outcome. Remembering that regiochemistry is the region where the chemistry occurs, in other words, where the atoms are placed. Anti-Markovnikov addition has the higher priority group added to the less substituted carbon atom. For stereochemistry, we're going to get what's called syn addition, meaning on the same side. And you'll see why when we cover a portion of the mechanism. The reaction is shown below, where you'll note here that the OH group is now added to the less substituted carbon atom, and that's what's meant by anti-Markovnikov addition. You'll notice the hydrogen has been added down here at the more substituted carbon. You'll also note that the alkene has been transformed into an alkane. Now worth drawing your attention to is borane, BH3. BH3 exists in nature as a dimer, as boron is electron deficient. So if borane, BH3, finds other borane, they will dimerize. Now this dimer is really robust. It does not do chemistry at all, which is why when you see borane being deployed in organic chemistry, you'll see it delivered as BH3 THF or Me2S. THF looks like this. It's called tetrahydrofuran, and it's a five-membered ring with an oxygen atom in it. Me2S is this, where it's a sulfur with two methyls, like so, also with a lone pair. What THF and Me2S do is they're able to form a Lewis acid, Lewis base complex with borane. In other words, the boron, which is electron deficient, is able to do chemistry with THF or dimethyl sulfide in order to form something that is reactive. And so when you see borane in organic chemistry, you will always see it delivered with THF, with dimethyl sulfide. You don't need to worry about this species. It is simply there to provide reactive borane, and it either bubbles out of solution in the case of dimethyl sulfide, or will just become part of the solvent in the case of THF. So just a heads up to not worry about those. They're simply there to provide a convenient source of that BH bond. Now we're gonna cover a portion of the mechanism so you understand the syn addition. So you will likely not need to see the entirety of the mechanism in your course because it's quite complex, but it does help to see the addition of the HB bond in order to understand the syn addition. And so I'm gonna show that to you. So what we have is an alkene here, and we don't need to worry about Markovnikov versus anti-Markovnikov addition. I'm gonna show the borane like so because this is the important piece of the puzzle. In this reaction, we get this four-membered ring transition state where we have a tack of the alkene on an electrophilic hydrogen atom, and we have the boron here attacking like so. So we make this four-membered ring intermediate, and I'm gonna draw it for you so you can see. So what we get is we get partially formed bonds across a bunch of atoms here, where we have the boron and the hydrogen with partially formed bonds. That's what those dotted lines mean. And we have the alkene bond is partially formed. And let me give square brackets and this double dagger there, which is how we indicate that this is a transition state. It's a transient species that is formed en route to the final product. Now you can take a look at this and say, wow, this is a really constrained ring. It only has four members to it. There is no option other than to have it formed on the same side of the alkene because it is so constrained geometrically. 
which is why we have sin addition, why we have addition of the H and B on the same side. It's entirely because this ring is so constrained in its geometry. It's for that reason that we will generate this product here from the hydroboration part of the reaction, where we will have both methyl groups on the same side and the hydrogen atoms and the BH2 on the same side. Now it's worth noting that we should draw both products here because while the addition is sin, we get it to either face with equal preference. Remember, sp2 hybridized carbons can have addition to either side with equal preference. So alternatively, I could have the methyls here and the hydrogen and BH2 here. So please keep this in mind that we have this syn addition, but we can have syn addition to the top face or the bottom face with equal preference. Now at this point, we will add the hydrogen peroxide and base. This here is the oxidation part of the reaction. And what we get is cleavage of that carbon boron bond and formation of the carbon OH bond. This is the part of the mechanism you don't need to worry about, but I am gonna draw the two final products so we can see a complete reaction here. In one of them, we have both methyl groups pointed up, like so, and we have the hydrogen on one side, the OH on the other carbon with syn addition, and we'll draw the other product here. We're the regiochemical outcome is the same, but the stereochemical outcome is what's different. So now the methyls are pointed down, the H and the OH are pointed up like so, and we have two products. Now this product is chiral, so it did matter, so we have a complete answer. At this point, you can now go to the next slide to practice this yourself. Okay, so we have a hydroboration oxidation reaction, which we know occurs with anti-Markovnikov addition and syn addition. So, easy peasy, I know that this happens at the alkene. Anti-Markovnikov addition says the OH goes here, the hydrogen goes here. I'll show that syn addition just for completeness's sake, like so. We should double check to make sure that this is chiral and it's not. So that's it. That is the product of this reaction. So hydroboration oxidation, anti-Markovnikov addition, syn addition, and it's a nice complement to acid catalyzed hydration because this provides the anti-Markovnikov product versus the Markovnikov that you saw with acid catalysis.